I got an iced coffee and they didn't deliver my Uber Eats. I'm mad. I am mad. Fucked up. I raccoon coffee, you failed me. You're my favorite. Not anymore. How you feeling, bro? I'm good. I'm a little tired. <laughs> a little tired? I might, I might do this for, okay. for a minute. Oof. I'm going to hide my bags, too, but like I'm just going to do this. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Solidarity. <laughs> uh, when would you get in, dude? Wednesday? Wednesday? Yeah. Yeah, I know Wednesday, like 8 p.m. or so. Okay. Nice. Easy nice, flight. Nice little vacation trot to Miami. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Took a couple of days off, said, you know, I'm going to stay here till, mon- uh, till Monday. Okay. Well, tell the people, who are you? My name is Arvin, uh, or my DJ name is just literally Arvin T. Um, I am also a meme admin on Instagram, Bedroom DJ Fantasies. Um, and I am a school counselor and a local Bushwick DJ. I love that for you. The New York scene. The New York scene, the scene must be tough. The Bushwick, Bushwick scene must be tough. Um, it's, it's, it's all right. I, I think it's, it's good. Um, it is tough. Uh, there are a lot of DJs out there, a lot of talented DJs, many of which are my friends. Um, but there's like quite a bit, but fortunately we have a lot of clubs and spaces. So it's such a different dynamic here versus we're so limited on spaces and opportunities here that like, like indirectly you don't want, like you're forced in a way to compete, which I hate that concept, but it's true. You know, you're, you're fighting for your slots versus in New York, there's so much opportunity, there's so many spaces, there's so many venues that you're fighting for, like, attention almost. Like, oh, no, no, come here. And, like, standing out of that. So, yeah. Um, describe your sound to us. Um, I mean, I mean, you want me to go, want me to go from, like, the beginning to the end? Do it. Is, whew, all right. Um, if you follow me, uh, you kind of know that I, I dig a lot of like synthy, a lot of, like very super into the 80s uh, and some of the 90s aesthetic. Uh, I, I love that kind of just like kind of like new wave sound. I love the the kicks, the percussions from the 80s, like the snares, just the, they get to me. So a lot of my music ha- involves revolves around that. Mm-hmm. Um, where, do and think, where do you think that love came from? Honestly, it came from my sisters. I have two older sisters, like. They're 10 and 14 years older than me, so they were like mom two and mom three. Um, and so, you know, I, I was, I'm a little older, so like I was born in the 80s. Um, and I grew up in an era where they would just, I would hear literally like Depeche Mode, Duran Duran, uh, like Cure. Ne- The Cure, Nietzsche Ebb, like literally it would go everywhere. Like it would be like EBM or. Um, you know, 80s pop uh, or new wave or some kind of disco. My mom and dad were like really into disco too. Mm-hmm. So, nice little funk, little dark wave, but like synth action. Mm-hmm. Love that. So, them being like in a way like your influence, how do they view you now and, and like your ambitions and your passions? Um, you know, they, I mean, my mom says she's proud of me because of the whole <laughs> school counseling thing and I'm working and. Uh, but with like music, you know, they, they they listen to sets that I play, you know, and I'm like really excited. I think I think I'm gonna try to get my mom to come see me play at this festival next uh, next month. In Chicago, right? Yeah, yeah. What's it called? It's called Sanctum Festival. Uh, Is it's this the inaugural one. Yeah, it's the inaugural festival. It's happening um, Thanksgiving weekend. So there's a lot of talented people on that. Lot. I mean, there's too many to name, but mm-hmm. I'm really excited for people like you know Boy Harsher. <laughs> Uh, soft crash, so. Nice. And why does why does Chicago hit home for you? Uh, I moved there after uh, college, um, so I was like in my early twenties. Uh, I lived lived there for almost like nine years or so, um, but it, it was just you know like my second home. Um, I spent a lot of my like formative years there too, and just like all my friends, I still take like I still go back and everything is, it's like nothing changed, like time stopped. Mm-hmm. Um, the club scene, the, the, the scene is a little different now, but like, it's just like, remember going to like Smart Bar and Spy Bar and these like great spots and kind of like developing a lot, like uh, picking up a lot of like influences there too. Gotcha, gotcha. I mean, I love the Chicago. I haven't explored the scene much there, unfortunately. Um, I do have family there and I visit, but. So you went there after college? Yeah, okay. yeah, so I was like 20, 21, 22. So where are you from? I'm from just outside of Detroit. Um, basically, like, 
15, 20 minutes away. Um, and yeah, I just like born and raised in that area. So. I mean, jumping from Detroit where like techno was born to Chicago, house was born there to now New York where it's like the mecca of music, I guess I would call it in, in the US. I mean, you have all these influences and and opportunities. I mean, it's it's hard not to be hard not to get involved when it's just so accessible. Yeah, no, I agree completely. Yeah, it's, um, I mean, my my whole development of all this was like right before, like it was basically like an undergrad and then like just like exploring things and I, I didn't know like too much. I was like soup. I was definitely not as, as versed as I am now, but mm -hmm. like, you know, I had friends who would just be like, hey, come on, there's like this warehouse party and I, I literally would just be like, you know, I'd be like that stereotypical, like I'm scared. What, what are you, what are you taking me to? Like, mm -hmm. in the mid 2000s, like I don't even, I couldn't even tell you where I was, like somewhere in Detroit. And I just was like, this is cool, but like it didn't like grasp at me completely because I was so timid and scared. I was very naive for a bit, mm -hmm. um, but really just like until like the late 2000s, that's when it like really, really hit. Well, do you remember your first experience with like going out and seeing electronic music? Yeah, I think a lot of people, I've, I've said it a few times, but like a lot of people will be like, oh man, screw you. Um, it's Lollapalooza, uh, 2000, I think that was 2007. Um, I saw Daft Punk play. Oh, <laughs> epic, that 2007 tour, yes. Yeah, and that was like incredible. That was like the one where I was like, okay, this is like, this is amazing. Um, but yeah, that was that, and then like Dead Mouse, I think was touring around the same time, and I loved him too. I was really hoping they were gonna do a um, a 2017 tour. So I was like, they did 97, they did 2007. I'm like, I'm waiting. I have the yeah, money no. ready. I was, just, but yeah. it never happened. It's all yeah. good. It's all good. You, you're a better person than us for for having seen that. Oh, <laughs> I wouldn't say that. My Got lucky. <laughs> my first rave was Darude. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's pretty. <laughs> okay. I mean, that's. I would say that's equal. He's a legend. So. He played Sandstorm three times. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? Why not? Why not? I, I agree. Why not? Um, so when do you, when was the transition from music fan to, let me give this DJ shit a try? Um, it was like two, th <sighs> maybe 2014, 2015, like uh, probably 2015. Mm -hmm. Um, I like, I, I don't know what happened. I just like kept going out and I was like, well, you know what? Like, what if I just got this small control? I think someone was like, oh, why don't you get like a small controller and just uh, practice, it'll be fun. And so I literally like, I mean, I make like jokes about it, but like I may, I like got like one of those like $130 like new marks, you know, that you, you slap onto your computer and like I had like virtual DJ. So I like picked up how to beat match on that, learned a little bit, like I had no fil like I had no, no filter, like no really good effects. So I just like learned that and then went to it tractor controller or something after two years or whatever and then after that i i mean i'm lucky that i live with someone who has like cdjs and a djm and i'm just not like i can practice on that um did, was from the, from the get-go were you playing like italo or like dark wave or like any of these sounds that you like now or like uh, definitely the 80s music like I, I do like edits of 80s music here and there um a little bit more housey uh but also like you know, disco, um, a little bit Italo. Like, there, I had a few tracks, but not as much as that. Like, dive as deep back then. Um, a lot of indie, like a lot of indie dance stuff too. Like, things that like the old, like kind of the old life and death sound, and like mm -hmm. sort of. Um, I don't even. Know, I'm trying to think of things like early influences. Um, yeah, I mean, just like that kind of style or um, inner visions, like the early, early set mm -hmm. stuff, like that style was very, I, I liked that back in tw like 2015 a lot, mm -hmm. so. Okay. Um, and did you, was, when was your first public set? Whew. Um, I think it was, oh my God, I'm like actually, I don't even know. Uh, it might've been like 20, 16, 20, yeah, 26. It was like literally not like super public. It was like a, a bar, like a local thing, if you want to call it that. But um, yeah, no, I just like did that once and then I was like super nervous about it. And then after that, just what happened was um, 
you know, like I moved to, like I say, like I moved to New York and then uh, went to grad school there. So I, I had no time. Grad school ended. I started doing it again. And then COVID hit. So it was great. Great timing. Great timing. COVID felt like a great reset for, for the scene in general. Like a lot of prominent artists before maybe not might be around now or ones that might never ner- might have never heard of just had this rise mm-hmm. you know straight up you know ones that come to mind are like like a DJ MLG for example like pre covid i was like who and then like all these it's almost like DJs became like like bedroom DJs for a second we're all streaming and then we're just like yeah we all became popular from there um New York's been interesting lately New York's been very interesting Paragon just opened mm mm-hmm. mhm Mouse is back. Yep. What, what are some other neat spaces out there? Nowadays, uh, basement and studio. The new room and basement is really. I, I, I heard there's a second room now. Like yeah. I was like, wh- where was that before? No, it was great. Uh, they've always had it. Um, and you'd see it if like it's like they have a Sunday party called like I think it's like usually like the ruins at Knockdown, which is like the outdoor area, mm-hmm. and. Um, you know, sometimes you'd walk through, like there, the bar would be there and like mm-hmm. that studio area, but nothing really set for like the club. Mm-hmm. Um, but they started doing like, you know, two rooms and, and honestly that's like the winning formula for me because I love it. You have, I, I'm not like a pure techno lover, like I love it, I, I, you know, I could get into it, but mm-hmm. I need some like balance. So hopping over to that room and getting a little bit more like eclectic sounds, mm-hmm. like that's that's like ideal for me. What sound do you think is like really like on the rise that wasn't maybe prominent there before New York, or what's like really like taking? I don't know. Like, I'm. It's hard to ask that question when I'm not sure. Yeah. No. Happening. I mean, I can't even. I don't even know how to answer it. Um, I feel like super. Like, I mean, I don't know. I've been seeing some of my friends like play like uh, like bass music, or um, you know, I'm starting to hear more like jungle, and that's like definitely that. Of course, like Jersey Club got like super big within the last like couple years you know unique helped a lot with like bring that into the spotlight obviously um recently uh it's always been there but like you know um but you know in terms of new york's music like i'm not as well versed in the genres that like thrive there i know all the d de- i like i know the djs that are like doing it mm-hmm. and they're amazing and, and i've seen a lot of them play um but you know it's 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 interesting because I don't think it's very. There's a lot of DJs that are like killing it in New York, but they're not they're not like pigeonholed into one or two genres. Like they'll do everything. They'll do like mm-hmm. several and make it work. I love that though. I think like being like kept into one. Like I mean, out of I don't I don't want to say like people who are fo- feel like they're forced into it. Like no, like yeah. expand your mind. You know, fuck around. Fuck I agree. Around and find out. Yeah, you just gotta play around if something sounds things sound good you play it that's like yep. that's it you know the assignment you know you make it work goes with the flow um you traveled a bit this summer you went to europe didn't you no not i went in april you went in april okay yeah yeah yeah, yeah. spring mm-hmm. how was that amazing um i it was like a solo trip um i played uh the at, in um london with my buddy uh granger um, we played <laughs> six hours back to back at this place called HWK, which is like an indoor outdoor sort of venue in Hackneywick. That was wild. Um, and then I spent a lot of time in Berlin, saw a lot of people there, met a lot of, I connected really just like heavily with the whole like Italo EBM scene there. Made friends with a lot of people that like share the, pa- the same passion in music and, um, you know, shout out to them. They're they're amazing humans. So, what's the biggest takeaway from your your travels there in Europe? Like seeing like London, like I mean, London's London, but like yeah. in general for for electronic music, and then you know Berlin's like like the the new kid on the block that's really like on fire mm-hmm. right now. Yeah, um, I mean that was maybe like my that was like my fourth time at Berlin, um, visiting Berlin, and that was my first time in London. So it, I didn't have I had two days in London, and so I didn't really like I was I was that was coming from Berlin, so I was exhausted. Um, but, you know, I the city was great. Um, Berlin, of course, I, I vibe with heavily. The music's great. And um, I I mean, like, I'm a sucker for the food there, too, so that helps. Um, 
yeah, no, it was, um, yeah, I learned a lot, I feel like, when I was there. Um, I learned, oh, like, you know, sh should stick to the, the music I, I do truly love and not try to, like, conform to anything that, like, people, you think people want to hear. Okay. So. Gotta stick to what you love. Gotta stick to what you love. Um, how many times have you been down here to Miami? Way too many times. <laughs> um, yeah. I feel like that's so, like, like, true for, like, people who live in New York that are in the scene. Like, like mm -hmm. oh, let's go to Miami. Yeah, no, I, um, every, even, like, when I was living in Chicago, like, I, I moved to New York in 2017, and, like, the early, early 2017, and, like, even in, like, 2014 to 2017, I, like, visited, like, five times or something, and, like, after I moved, um, yeah, like, it's almost, I almost come here, like, once a year, and it's usually for, it's, like, definitely for music every time, um, you yeah. had sequence last year, right? Yeah, yeah, sequence, yeah. Mm -hmm. Sequence Fest, and then you're here for Three Points. How's Three Points going for you? It's great. Um, Who'd you enjoy last night? What's that? Who'd you enjoy last night? Oh, you're putting me on the spot here. Um, obviously, everyone from Miami was amazing. Um, you know, uh, Winter Wrong, Ultra Them, Souls Departed, Four, Johnny, mm -hmm. Sister System. Like, it was all just like, they were all, everyone sounded incredible. It was tough to like jump around. Like I, I, oh, I wanted to try to like explore, but I was like, no, I'm just gonna stick to them. Ah, door four was popping. Mm hmm. Yeah. I mean, in terms of like outside of Miami talent, like, I mean, Miss Kitten and the Hacker are my. That's like that's my. That they have my heart. Like I've always wanted to see Miss Kitten. I've only, I've, I've seen the Hacker one time, but they were they were like legendary. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. It was. It's a good time. I'm excited for tonight too. Mm hmm. Nice little cheeky trot around. Nana and Winwood. Mm -hmm. So you're a mean boy. Yeah. Yeah. How'd that start? Um, shout out to. <laughs> okay. This was before COVID. And it's sh I'm gonna shout out my friend Mikey, who uh, Mikey Fabs, who like. It was just like so random. I feel like we were just like texting back. Like I think we were like sending memes back and forth, and he was he just was like, dude, like we should just start like making memes and like make a meme page and that actually never happened we but we were like we just we had the idea and it never executed it and then when was this like this idea when was it 29 like 2019 like i'm gonna say like right like maybe november or december and then just sort of like sort of let it go um you know but then COVID hit, and then even a year after, like, it's, I still didn't start it till like, 20, like, a year ago, 2021, August, and, like. Was it that long, like, that early, or it's barely been a year? It's only, it's barely been a year, yeah. It's crazy. Yeah, um, but it, I started off with, like, you know, I, I, I messaged him, I was like, hey, like, I'm gonna do this, like, should I just post all our, all, all the stuff, and he said, yeah, so, like, I posted, the early, like, the early stuff was all like pretty much him and I, and then like one of my friends, Shannon, had a, a hilarious like Eric Pritz meme, and I, I posted that. But um, it was very much like you I'm know, gonna go shut that off. Yeah, 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 go shut <laughs> up. <laughs> um, I'll keep talking though. Uh, so we basically just—I mean, I I did the whole thing, and um, you know, I tagged Mikey, and I don't know what happened. It just sort of kind of picked up steam, and you know. Mm -hmm person who shall not be named uh, helped me big time because, you know, I don't really want to mention who it is. Of course. But, you know, uh, no longer affiliated. Did, did you have, like, a, like, one meme that, like, really, like, just fucking blew it up for you? Or, like, one person that, like, shared it and you're like, whoa, like, I don't know. Honestly, I, I like, remember doing, like, the Kramer, like, the, the, the Seinfeld meme where, like, mm -hmm. They're they're doing something in my my room, Jerry or whatever, like uh -huh. doing that for the horror Berlin one, and like everyone shared that, and I was like, oh god, <laughs> like it blew up, like it was just like, and at the time I didn't have that many like followers, and then that one just kind of skyrocketed, and mm -hmm. um, I'm trying to think of what else. Yeah, I remember you were like, oh, you're like at five k followers, and like I just look now, you're like at forty three thousand, like that's yeah. crazy, <laughs> fucking crazy. <laughs> yeah, I don't know, I just have like crazy intrusive. Thoughts <laughs> about the, about the scene. I, I guess that's like the only way I could say it. How many of them are original? A good amount, like yeah. eighty. I'd say like eighty-five percent, ninety percent. I mean, no memes. No memes are like tr like. Besides, the, like the you're always the inspired by something, right. of course. Yeah. Yeah. Like um, the memes. I don't know, you'd be able, you'd be able to tell, but like 
the random pictures, like for example, like the Bergine one with like the EDC people, like that was just like me photoshopping shit and like things like that. Obviously, very clearly are original and made by me, but. There's always like those formats and like, you know, you just find the formats and redo them and, um, but for the most part, like that's usually me. Um, I'd say a good vast majority of it is and then the rest is just like other meme pages that aren't music related that have hilarious formats where I'm like, I'm gonna take this for now and change it to like make fun of DJs basically yeah. or <laughs> promoters or whoever like I feel like. Has there been an artist who's been like you? You memed them, and they were like genuinely pissed. Yes, <laughs> I'm not gonna say who it is. Uh, I'll just say it's a say it's a techno DJ that really just like went off. And um, like, was this like a comment, a message, or how do they go off on it, you? I, I mean, it was literally in DMs. I was like, <laughs> and it was it was within two minutes of me posting it because I tagged him. But like, holy shit! Like he like went off, and I was like. Sorry, dude. I'll delete it. Like it wasn't even. I wasn't even making fun of him directly or like oh. his music. It was just, you know, like, yeah. I saw him at a warehouse party, and the warehouse party was next to a Popeyes, and like, you know, it just like the geotag on Snapchat uh -huh. like said Popeyes, Popeyes chicken, and like, it was just like the the the, the comment was just like it was uh, raving at raving at the Popeyes at six a.m. and like. That's all it was, because it was a geotag. Really? And that's what they got mad over? Yeah. yeah. I don't know who it is, but are you insecure? <laughs> I mean, they, had, they, they were they were like, they said a couple things, and I was like, okay, yeah, you're right. Okay, sorry. I'll delete it. Sheesh. Okay. Yep. Okay. Um, who's been your famous DJ that's followed your account that you, like, geeked over? Famous DJ? Um, oh, my God. I'm weird. I don't geek out too much about other... DJ's following. I'm trying to think of who though. Like, I mean, I mean, can I say a non-DJ? Sure. Aquafina. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Aquafina. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. That's yeah. That's 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 a flex. That's a, I was like, wait, what? <laughs> Is this actually her? And yeah. That's great. Okay. That's cool. That's yeah. really cool. Shout out Nora from Queens, huh? Like, there you go. Shout out. It's crazy how. I'm all about community. Community for me, like, is everything. And you, you literally built a community based off just our scene but like a humorous way of it and it's it's beautiful to me that's that's beautiful like yeah. um what's been the funniest interaction you've had because of your page uh huh funniest interaction um or like just an outworldly like interaction that's happened as a result of the page oh i Yo, some people like totally ran up to me during making time, like the festival in Philly. Uh -huh. uh, and I was just, I was like with a few friends, like, you know, DJs and just people like that were at the fest. And like, they came up to me and they're like, hey, oh my God, are you Arvin? Like, bedroom DJ fantasies? Oh my God. And they <laughs> literally asked to take a picture with me. And I was like, no, no fucking way. Like, <laughs> this could not be happening. I was just like, wait, what? Like, not me. Please, not me. I'm not that famous. Please, no. Oh, man. I took the picture, but, like, <laughs> man. Surreal. Yep. Oh. Um, is, I know you could, like, check. I'm not sure if you have checked, but, like, is most of your follower base, like, American, European, like, um, other places? like Definitely majority U.S., um, mm -hmm. but, like, it, it's it's all across. It's, a, it's, like, across the globe, which is crazy, but mm -hmm. mostly uh, U.S.-based, um, you like the it's, it's, I think it says UK, mm -hmm. uh, maybe just like Europe based, um, Australia, surprisingly. Mm -hmm. So fire, yeah. What other meme pages are like God to you, like boom? But <laughs> <laughs> Yo, you look at um, them and you're just like, yes, you're doing it right. Oh my God, that's. It doesn't even have to be like a DJ like meme page to be. I mean, it's like all my all my meme friends. The meme oh, gang. Meme friends? Meme yeah, gang? Meme friend. Yeah, meme gang. You guys have a group um, chat? <laughs> yeah, actually. <laughs> there's like, <laughs> there's, I'm not going to say more, but there's a bunch of us together. And, you know, we just talk shit. And uh, honestly, it's like, we don't even talk about anything. We just talk about random, random bullshit. Like, it's mm -hmm. not even anything serious. But, you know, like, I'm, I'm friends with, like, Bathroom DJ's Greatest Hits, mm -hmm. uh, Techno Meme 666, like, mm -hmm. DJ Laundry Basket, 
all the new metal karaoke. That like there's all that. Of course, meet me in Transpecos. Yes. Soul Seeking Arrangement. Like the, the New York based ones, there's a few of us that Soul Seeking Arrangement. I've never heard of that one, but just the name alone. <laughs> oh um, yeah, she's she's amazing. She's hilarious. Yeah, um, I, def- I definitely follow a few from you like like a ho- is it like Horny Mermaid or something like that? Oh like yeah. Them. Mm-hmm. Um my favorite one m- my other favorite ones besides yours is it's a Spanish one. It's it's like El Mol Rave or something like that. I've seen that. I think I think actually yeah, I think I might follow that one. <laughs> yeah, they're out of pocket, but it's, it's in Spanish. But like, I I love it. Oh my god, it's it's great, <laughs> amazing, amazing. Uh, have have any of your students at school found your page? Nope, uh, nope, don't, nope, don't nope. Don't look for it. Nope, <laughs> don't look for it. They're not gonna. I mean, they're not. I mean, I've tested everything. <laughs> I'm good. It seems. We'll see. Okay. That's all I'll say. It's crazy. You you literally have like the most wholesome job, and then you're. DJ, mean boy, and I, I love it. Um, yeah. Balance. Balance. Yeah. yeah. I need an outlet, right? Like, so, yeah. besides therapy, I do therapy, but, like, that's so helpful. Don't we all? I actually yeah. started therapy for the first time, like, two weeks ago. Ooh. Yeah. Good, good. good uh, I was, like, renewing my insurance, and it's like, oh, free online therapy once a month? Yep. It's annoying. She was like, you're so grounded. I'm like, no, I'm here to talk about my feelings. Don't, don't tell me I'm grounded. Mm-hmm. <laughs> no, no. Yeah, it's, um, I, I think it's important. Mental health is, especially in this this music scene, like, People need to take care of themselves, and unfortunately, there's barriers. So a lot of those barriers are money and insurance, and the U.S. not taking mental health seriously. So of course, yeah. What's what's your one tip as a counselor to the DJ community scene? Please take care of yourself. Don't burn yourself out. Don't stress over anything. I know it's, like, tough not to compare. I mean, I do this, too. Like, I compare myself all the fucking time. And, like, mm-hmm. sorry, I don't know if I'm supposed to swear. but No, th- we don't give a fuck. Curse. Okay. Right. Yeah. This is different um, radio, not online. Not, like, FM radio. Cool. We're good. We're cool. Uh, Yeah, no. I just, like, just take care of yourself because that's the number one thing. Um, If I feel the urge of, like, burning out, I will, like, separate myself. Um which is very difficult in this scene because you feel like you have to constantly like put out content or do something to like be, have the eyes on you in some sort of fashion. Mm -hmm. Um, But truly just taking like a week or two away is, is okay. It's healthy. It's absolutely healthy. I think Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm kind of reaching a point. Like I think after Halloween week, I'm just going to lay low until like new year, basically. Yeah. Make some music. Yeah, and it's it's tough to um, let me just also add this because like I please, feel please. I feel bad that I said that. Um, it's tough when this is your primary form of like um, income because you know I'm fortunate to have like a full time job and this isn't really like a full time thing for me. Mm-hmm. It would be great if it was, but it's okay. This is like just a passion, a hobby. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know those those that have to like constantly go out and DJ, and I think a lot of it. A lot of the issues are, you know, bookers, promoters, lowballing. You know, it's not it's not a lot of them, but there are some out there that definitely they don't pay well. They they make like you know they'll like not Uber the artist over. They'll they're they're just basically just don't handle it well. And I think mm-hmm. that contributes to the burnout on those like full time DJs. Of course, of course. Yeah, shout out to the ones that do it this full time. I mean, that's that's the dream, but. Mm-hmm. Sometimes it's tough, man. It's hard. It is hard. So look out for your artist. Take care of yourself. You heard it from the man himself. Please pay them. Please pay them. Please pay them. Anything coming up for you? Besides this festival in Chicago we just talked about? Uh, next week. Um, on Friday in Brooklyn um, at Transpecos, I'm playing a new, uh, it's like, it's new beat, industrial, EBM, sort of like party, Halloween party called Dark Dance, um, and it's a yearly thing. Uh, I'm playing with Regalio and Umfeng. Oof, fire. Yeah. Fire. So, nice. should be good. You have your costume picked out? <laughs> no. Um, some of my friends were like, let's be the EV Evolutions, and someone already selected the one I wanted, so I'm like, I'm just not gonna dress up. Fuck them. <laughs> <laughs> She's lovely. <laughs> She's lovely, but fuck them. Just kidding. Um, I need to pick out a costume. I haven't thought about that. What do you want to be? No, I'm I'm opening up for for who, who am I gonna do? For 
I forgot the name right now. Oh, cashew. Cashew. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. It's a Brazilian part. Maybe I'll just be a Brazilian player. Figure it out. Think about it. Um, anything beyond Halloween party? Um, not really. I actually haven't planned anything. Mm-hmm. Um, I feel like usually bookings come like two weeks out for me. Um, but besides that, it's the it's the Chicago Sanctum thing. Um, so I'm not mm-hmm. sweating it very much. Um, I am going to go to Europe again uh, mm-hmm. mid December and probably stay through like the New Year. Um, where, where to? Berlin, of course. I'm um, going to go hang out with some friends there uh, and potentially play. Nothing confirmed yet, so I can't say it, but... Um, I hope so. Yeah. So I have two things potentially in the making, so I'll... I mean, if you follow me on social media, you'll see it. All right. Um, do you still do events yourself? I put it on a hiatus, but I'm going to bring it back. Um, I had the a party series that was at this little basement of a cocktail bar called the Heart Bar, um, but you know the, the one that you played as well. Thank um, you. But I've held off on it because the summer was really busy. Um, I just like there were a lot of DJ sets, and I was just kind of like, I can't. Yeah, you were popping off I, every week. I saw something new. <laughs> and I like the new clubs, you know, the ones that reopen. I'm like, mm-hmm. go out of them. You should yeah. be proud of yourself. You should be really proud of yourself, Thank honestly. You. Yeah. No, th- th- they were fun. Paragon is amazing. Boss is amazing. Um, so shout out to John for having me. Um, but yeah, the party, uh, I'm going to try to do the party series again now that some of our smaller venues are open reopening. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, I'd rather do something more intimate than bigger. Nice. Yeah. Less pressure. Less pressure. Yeah. More fun. Any shout-outs or closing thoughts? Mm, oh, man. I mean, obviously, shout-out everyone who follows me on the meme page hey. and also follows me on my personal slash DJ hey. account. So thank you for laughing with me. We love you, Arvin. Thanks for being on. Thank ready you for, for having me. Ready for that DJ set after two hours of sleep? Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm going to be playing a lot of... Um, from some friends, unreleased music from um, a lot of Italo labels, and honestly, who knows? We'll see. We'll see. We'll I, lo- see. I love how we agreed to do this, like knowingly we were gonna go to a festival and do afters after. Yeah, love that for us. Great times. <laughs> All right, y'all. Arvin T on the DJ set. Give us two minutes. Thank you. <laughs>